Chapter 1. There is nothing wrong with you. It's what's right with you that counts. For many years, we've been told that our negative thoughts need to be challenged and changed. However, have you ever considered that perhaps your negative thoughts and your moods don't actually link into the things that are wrong with you, example your fears, but instead they come from what is actually very right for you? Confused? Look at it this way. If you're often concerned about the state of your relationship and you always worry that your partner's going to leave you, yes, that could leave you feeling very down and upset. However, when you turn that negative thought on its head, you could come to the conclusion that the reason you feel this way is because you love your partner so much and you're a generally loving and open person. How can being a loving person ever be a bad thing? Your negative thoughts often come from your positive traits. You simply need to unearth them and question them in order to find the answers. We often dwell on the negative without challenging it and really thinking about where it came from. When you do that, you are controlled by negativity and your mood follows suit. Feeling great is the perfect read for anyone who has been feeling unhappy and down for a long time. The techniques contained within the book will allow you to see things in a completely different and revolutionary way. The truth is that most of us think in double standards. If something doesn't work out or you fail in some regard, you beat yourself up and you're extremely self-critical. However, if a friend was to do exactly the same thing, you would tell them that it's not their fault and they did the best they could, etc. It's time we start taking our own advice. Many of your thoughts are the result of double standards. The next time you are critical of yourself, ask yourself what you would say to a friend, and then take your own advice. Many of your thoughts are distorted. They're simply not true. When you're in the grips of anxiety and or depression, you're caught up in a cycle of deception that seems almost impossible to escape. The truth is that anxiety and depression are very good liars. By learning to change the way you think, you can change the way you feel and beat them for good. The negative thoughts that upset you are nearly always distorted, and they're just not true. Depression and anxiety are the world's oldest cons. David D. Burns Chapter 2. Understanding Your Cognitive Distortions Many of your thoughts aren't true. That means they are cognitive distortions. This is a fancy term which basically means that what you think about a particular situation and how it makes you feel is twisted or affected. For instance, if you magnify something, example, you blow it out of proportion, that would be a cognitive distortion. This is important when you understand that your thoughts create your feelings, and this happens all the time. Everyone suffers from cognitive distortions, whether you suffer with anxiety and depression or not. Whatever is going on around you at a specific time can play a huge part in deciding how you react, think, and ultimately how you feel. Some of the most common types of cognitive distortions are magnification and minimization, which means you either blow something out of proportion or completely downplay it. You may think in an all-or-nothing way, with no gray areas and a totally black and white picture. You might completely avoid thinking about the positives and focus only on the negatives. Or you might do the opposite and avoid the negatives and only focus on the positives. Both can be damaging, and this is referred to as mental filtering. Jumping to conclusions is another very common cognitive distortion. This is when you don't stop to think about the facts and you work on your emotions or fear at the time, jumping straight to the conclusion that seems the most plausible to you. The problem is that plausible is different for everyone. The various cognitive distortions often occur together. By identifying your cognitive distortions, you can unpick your own thought patterns. By changing the way in which you think, you can directly impact the way you feel. It's also quite fast-acting. Many of the people Burns has worked with noticed an improvement in a matter of days. Chapter 3. How Positive Reframing Can Change the Way You Think If your negative thoughts don't come from the very things that you perceive to be wrong with you, but actually from the positive traits you have, how can you change those negatives and realize the positives? Through positive reframing. Positive reframing is a very popular cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT technique, which is used for a variety of mental and emotional problems. When you are diagnosed with anxiety, it's easy to think that you're somehow defective and that there's no hope, but that's not the case. The moment you understand that your negative thoughts directly affect how you feel and that these perhaps don't come from what's wrong with you, but what's great about you, everything changes. Instead, you can turn that negativity into pride, feeling good about your best qualities. You do all of this by using positive reframing. Positive reframing is a cognitive behavioral therapy technique which takes a negative thought and flips it around into a positive. Burns gives the example of a new mother who was feeling hopeless and depressed because she was struggling to breastfeed her child. 
We all know that not every woman can breastfeed and that it's just as acceptable and healthy to bottle feed. Yet this lady felt a huge sense of guilt and failing. To use positive reframing in this situation, Burns suggested that the sense of guilt she was feeling wasn't because she was failing, but instead was due to how focused she was on giving her child the vitamins they need, actually making her a good mother. The anxiety she experienced wasn't about anything wrong, but instead it helped to motivate her to do the best for her baby. The anger she felt about the situation wasn't defective, and instead it showed that she was desperate to protect her baby. These are all perceived negatives, which are then turned into huge positives. Absolutely any situation or feeling can be reframed in this way. You simply need to think carefully and identify a direct correlation to the negative. By doing so, you easily see that there is nothing wrong. You're simply doing your very best. In order for positive reframing to work, you need to identify a positive, which is a complete correlation. By doing that, you will believe the positive and completely reframe the negative. Chapter 4. You may feel stuck in depression and anxiety, but there is a way out. When you're in the middle of anxiety and depression, it's easy to assume that there is no way out. It seems like you're in a very dark place, and trying to dig your way out seems impossible. However, even if you don't have depression, it's easy to find yourself stuck in a bad mood, and it's difficult to shake off. None of this is an accident. It's completely deliberate. In order to shake yourself out of a bad mood, or even start to dig yourself out of depression, you have to admit to yourself something which you might be loathed to accept. The thing you need to accept varies from person to person and situation to situation. When you're stuck in a bad mood, it's often that you need to accept something that you really don't want to face up to. When you do this, your mood ebbs away. Burns mentions that the Buddha said we end up suffering emotionally because we tell ourselves that we need something in order to be happy or to feel complete. What we need to do is accept ourselves as we are, but we often struggle with that because we focus on our flaws. As a result, you're stuck in a never-ending cycle. Telling yourself that you need something is a lot like being in a hypnotic trance. David D. Burns Anxiety is also something that is easy to become stuck feeling. We often find ourselves stuck because we falsely think that being anxious about something is a protective bubble. We think that if we worry this much, it stops bad things happening. For instance, you subconsciously believe that if you worry about your children to the point of not sleeping, it's protecting them from something happening. The only way to break this cycle is to either reframe it and realize that it actually stems from your positive qualities and then accept it, or confront your fear. Depending upon what your fear is, exposure therapy can be extremely terrifying, but it's also effective. Anxiety sufferers usually resort to magical thinking. They assume that by worrying, they're preventing something negative from happening. In reality, that doesn't work. You either need to reframe the worry or confront it. Chapter 5. How a Daily Mood Journal Can Help Turn Your Situation Around There are several techniques you can use to reframe your negative thoughts into positives, but the starting point is to keep a journal of your moods, to work out where you need to focus your attention. Byrne suggests identifying one particular event in your life, in the far past or recently, that made you feel low. This is because when you feel that way, it's often that all your problems are rolled together into that one single event, and everything comes to a head. By understanding why you were so negatively affected by that single moment, you can successfully work out what causes you to feel that way in any event following. You should then use the journal whenever you're feeling down or low and describe how you feel, using complete sentences, and how you dealt with it. Did you overthink it? Did you magnify it? A mood journal can help you to identify your common reactions when you feel down. By doing this, you can reframe recurrent cognitive distortions and directly affect how you feel. Once you've identified your negative thoughts, you can work to reframe it as you did earlier, by thinking about how that negative thought says something positive about you and your overall traits. There are several techniques that are used in reframing. The double standards method is one we've already touched on, but you can also learn to keep things in perspective by examining the truth or the evidence you have in front of you, being specific with facts rather than blowing them out of proportion, and thinking about the best versus the worst case scenario, and then coming to the average in the middle. Challenging your cognitive distortions is extremely effective because your thoughts decide how you feel. Depression treatment is often considered to be a long-haul deal, but this technique works fast, simply because you're directly affecting your thoughts and your correlated feelings. Recovering from depression doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out process. By affecting your feelings via your thoughts, you will notice results fast. 
Chapter 6. Learn how to kick distorted thoughts out of your mind. You will always experience cognitive distortions because it's part of human nature. However, you can learn techniques to challenge these distortions and turn them around quickly before they have a chance to affect the way you feel. One of the main cognitive distortions is all or nothing thinking. This means everything is completely wonderful or everything is completely terrible. For instance, you might pass your driving test and you're so happy that you think you're never going to feel down or bored again because you can go out for a drive. Of course, this isn't realistic because everyone feels down sometimes. So the next time you feel down, you automatically feel like you failed because passing your driving test didn't solve all your life's problems. This is an example of positive all or nothing thinking. And it can work the other way too, assuming everything is terrible all the time. Jumping to conclusions and magnifying a situation are common pitfalls. Look for the gray areas and question the thought. You'll quickly find perspective once more. It's important to remember perspective and understand that there are shades of gray in every subject or feeling. It isn't ever all one way or all the other. There is always some middle ground. So whilst it's great you've passed your driving test and it's going to give you a lot more freedom, you should tell yourself that there will still be down days because that's simply part of life, but that you'll do the best you can whenever those times occur. Many cognitive distortion types can be overcome by seeking out the gray areas. For instance, overgeneralization. In this distortion, you take an event and assume that every event like that one will work out the same in the future. For instance, if you were cheated on in a relationship, you assume that every single future partner will do the same. That is going to detrimentally affect your dating life. Instead, seek out the gray and tell yourself that it's unfortunate what happened, but that doesn't mean that every other person you meet is going to do the same thing. Overgeneralization can often lead to depression and anxiety. Focus on seeing the good in situations and remember that just because one situation went a particular way, it doesn't mean they all will. Many people catastrophize. This means you jump from 0 to 100 in the space of a second. This is a magnification type of cognitive distortion, and it is often associated with anxiety and panic attacks. Panic attacks and insomnia are intensely uncomfortable, but they're not dangerous. David D. Burns If you regularly feel this way, it's important to focus on reframing those situations. A good reframe here would be to tell yourself that you magnify these situations so quickly because you care so much. Being a caring person is a positive thing. Another technique is to look closely at the evidence and pull it back into perspective. Is there solid evidence that should cause you to worry? There probably isn't. From there, you can work towards accepting it and simply allow the situation to flow. Chapter 7. Learn the techniques to manage a likely relapse. Having overcome many of your negative thoughts, you might be tempted to think that you're never going to encounter problems again. That's all or nothing thinking. Of course you will go through hard times again, and of course that will affect how you feel. However, by learning relapse techniques, you can challenge those thoughts and change the way you feel quickly. You did it once before, and you can do it many times again if necessary. Hard times will come your way in the future, but you can prepare for future negative thoughts and reframe them quickly when slash if they occur. It's important to accept that you will relapse at some point in the future because hard times happen to everyone. From there, remember that the positive reframing methods you used before can be used again. They were successful for you in the past, and there's no reason why they can't be successful for you in the future. Finally, it's a good idea to preempt any possible future negative feelings that may come your way. Earlier, you began a mood journal, but now you can create a journal to deal with possible relapses. Think about how you might feel when you encounter a similar problem to the one you did in the past and identify how you can overcome it. By doing that, you can quickly get to work when that situation does come your way, and it won't impact you half as much as it did before. A journal will help you to identify how you could deal with a relapse. Think about how you might react, and then how you should refrain that thought. You then have a head start. Conclusion When you understand that you have a lot more control over your feelings than you think you do, everything changes. Your negative thoughts aren't magically manifested to drag you down. They're a direct effect of all the things that make you great. You're worried because you care. You're angry because you're motivated. The list goes on. Once you understand the power of your negative thoughts, life becomes easier. However, this also hinges on you being able to identify the way you handle your cognitive distortions. Do you overgeneralize? Do you work with an all-or-nothing method of thinking? Do you catastrophize? Be honest and use a journal to identify our specific methods and from there, work to reframe.
The future will be a lot happier and brighter by putting in a little effort now. Try this. Number one, keep a journal of your negative thoughts for a week or two. Can you identify any trends which may help you to work out your regular cognitive distortions? Number two, make a list of all your positive traits. Think hard and do your best to add to the list every day. This will help you to reframe your negative thoughts more easily. Number three, celebrate every small win along the way. When you start to feel better about one particular issue, give yourself a pat on the back. This will motivate you to keep going.